Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. You got myself, Noir Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week, my brother, Pedro. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, the creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Oh, yeah. This is the show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, smash them together to make inspirational projects for you folks. Now I tell these fine folks what's on the show this week. All righty. Well, on the show this week, we got a coupon code for you. Paying some bills with Octoprint. <laughs> That's right. Use Octoprint during checkout to get 10% off your oh, order. Wow. You can get That's printers, right. filament, and of course, all the lovely assortments of breakout boards and electronics that we sell in the store. Yeah, the coupon code's Octoprint this week because we're taking a close look at using the new plugin manager from Octoprint. It's called Touch UI from Billy Blaze, and it lets you use uh, Octoprint, it turns it into a nice mobile interface. So you can use your Adafruit Pi TFTs or your mobile phone. It's great for small screens. Really, Check out really the cool. project video to see That's the right. whole thing. We also got some deals for you folks. You go to adafruit.com slash free. You're going to get uh, all the details for all these things. If you buy a 3D printer, you get free shipping. That's right. It starts at $100 more. You get the free Promo Proto, half size. Yep. $150, you get a 5 volt trinket. $200 or more, free shipping. Yep. And a Pro Trinket 5 volt uh, for all orders over $250. That's right, folks. Holidays is upon us. So shipping, shipping, shipping. Get all your orders in before December 11th for guaranteed delivery by Christmas. That's right. Adabot will deliver you your package. <laughs> okay. So let's run through what we got on the show today. We got some segments, as always. What are you prototyping? So we take a look at what we're working on for a future episode. We'll do the Lair Belair. So we take a look at the CAD techniques that we use. Do a shop talk. So we talk about some things going on in the office. We have some Q&A from YouTubes. That's right. Remember to leave a question in any of the videos, and we'll gather, up, gather them up for a future episode. And our favorite segment, Community Makes. So when we take a look at some of the makes that the guys are making. That's right. I love this uh, 3D printed text. I want to do that for all the segments because it's so fun looking. Adabot's like, hey, what's up? All this and more on 3D Hangouts. That's right. Well, let's start off with what you're prototyping. Pedro, this week, something special. Show the folks what you got. Yeah, so with all the th you know horrible things going on in Paris, um, thought we remake the uh, Thomas helmet from Daft Punk. Right. You guys might remember last year we did the uh, Guy helmet, which That's is right. pretty popular. I actually have it right here. <laughs> Tell us about the, the helmet. Yeah, so this was originally because of the uh, documentary that's coming out pretty soon in the States. It was already released. Oh, that's right. I heard about overseas. that. So there's a new documentary on Daft Punk, and it was not released in America yet. Yeah, so what I'm working on now Still. is doing another test fitting over there. We're going to have the NeoPixel rings on the side here, and I think I'm just going to have a strip of uh, NeoPixel, probably the dot stars going across here, because I actually want to be able to see through it when I wear it. Um, if you guys remember, uh, you're not able to see out of this one. So we are doing some molds for the shades. It's going to go on there. We're going to use some transparent warbler and then use the um, like the chrome or the uh, like the the blackened out like the limo tint basically, so we can see through that. So pretty cool. Definitely wearable. Looks. Yeah. What cool. I like about this one is it's a lot more lighter. Um, it's optimized heavily in Fusion 360. I actually started this design uh, when you did this one in 123D. Um, so you brought it into Fusion, uh, you cut it up strategically so that it doesn't require any supports. This one doesn't require any supports either, but it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit more heavier, but you made it really nice and thin. It's still strong. Yeah. Um, and it's it's been printed on the Type A machines, I believe, with no supports, right? Yeah, that's right. No, Absolutely no supports were required for this because I'm uh, strategically cutting these up so that <laughs> there's nothing required here for the visor part. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for that future episode. Okay. Well, that's very cool. Daft punking it up. Um, yeah. Okay. That's what we got going on this week. That's um, that'll be a future project, obviously, because you're prototyping it still. Yep. Uh, if you folks have any ideas on how to make the the visor, um, let us know. Because transparent warble is something we haven't. It's on order. We're still getting it. Yeah. We're gonna try bending some acrylic as well. Like heating it up and bending it. Yeah. yeah. And then just layer, layering that type of uh, tint Tinting onto on top it. Of yeah. it yeah. So we'll see how well it works. Hopefully it turns out good. Yeah, if that doesn't work, like if it isn't strong enough to hold all of the uh, NeoPixels in place, we're, I'm probably going to go this route again. And it's not going to be, you know, mm. uh, it'll be wearable, but you won't be able to see through <laughs> it. So. Yeah, hopefully we can see through it this time. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Um, let's run into the layer by layer segment next. 
Uh, very so cool layer by layer that you put Sure, put so be sure to check out this layer by layer, this week's layer by layer. It's actually a video this time. Uh, we're just going to take a quick look at it here now and just um, talk about what it's about. So uh, with Fallout 4 coming out, I've been working on a Pip-Boy 3000 Mark IV for the Raspberry Pi 2 and a 3.5 inch Adafruit Pi TFT. Mm -hmm. So in this week's layer by layer tutorial, I thought I'd put together, just a, take a piece from that project and show you guys how to use the sculpting tools to make a very uh, sort of organic, puffy <laughs> Raspberry Pi case. Because um, everything we see is like all like sharp cornered edges. Sure. And uh, you know, I've been using it heavily on the Purple People Eater project. And this is a really good example of that, but making a nice puffy enclosure for the Raspberry Pi. So uh, basically, the hood part, the little display for the Pip Boy. Is, is what I'm taking a look at here and just showing you how to use the symmetry, how to cut it up, how to make a shell, and then how to use the parametric timeline to make edits after all these features and things. So it's a pretty cool, interesting tutorial. It is a long one. It's 30 minutes long, but it shows you every little thing. There's no editing in it. It's just straight on who's how to do it. Yep. So check that out. It is up now on the YouTubes, Adafruit's YouTube. Very handy tool using the free form modeling there. Yeah. Uh, sneak. Peak, not yeah. really, but no, yeah, you, uh, you I'm using it. it on the handle for making the energy sword from. Oh, that's Halo right. 5. The energy sword's in the progress yeah. too. So there you go, folks. Um, yeah, let's move on to the shop hop. Shop talk. We're getting through the show pretty nice. This is great. Okay, so shop talk this week. Uh, do you guys remember that Halloween props contest? That's right. We sponsored prop contests, offered some prizes. Like three printer, a bunch of electronics. Yeah, so and check it out. This uh, this we got week some finalists. This week we have finalists, and the winners will be announced soon. Soon this later this week. Um, check out some of the cool projects. We got the DIY Fallout uh, bomb prop. We have uh, the Sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who. We have a lot of other cool projects. We even have a Pit Boy 3000 that's using the 2.8 Adafruit Pi TFT, and um, one of my favorites is the electromagnetic Thor hammer, mm -hmm. which you guys may have seen on YouTube. So of course. all of these are the finalists. Very, very cool projects. I wonder who will win. We'll let you guys know uh, within the, the weeks. So be sure to check out um, Instructables' social channels and Adafruit social channels. We don't know yet, so we're, we're wondering who is going to win. Hopefully, it's you. OK. Next thing I want to talk about is 3D printing on YouTube. That's right, 3D printing on YouTube is the hashtag trend that was started by Angus from Makers Muse. That's basically where a maker will answer six questions about 3D printing, and then at the end, they nom nominate three more makers. And this is really cool because it's a way to kind of bring content creators and people who are passionate about 3D printing mm -hmm. together, uh, getting discovering new YouTuber makers and um, seeing insights and different experiences. So what I've done is I put together a list on the blog and a playlist on our YouTube channel on uh, the videos so far. So far we have eight videos, including ourselves. Um, so yeah, check out these YouTube channels. We got The Hot End, 3D Printing Nerd, Chuck's Electronic Projects, Calvin Witt, Tech Wiz and XYZ Aiden. Mm -hmm. We actually tagged Aiden, we tagged Bob Claggett from I Like to Make Stuff, and we tagged James Bruton from X Robots. Uh, so we'll be seeing this a lot. It's just, you know, it's we'll, spreading like wildfire. It's yeah. spreading like wildfire. Very and interesting to see what a lot of the tips of uh, how other people are using 3D yeah, printing. And, I've, and I have a bunch of new channels now that I'm subscribed to. So thank you guys for participating in this. Big shout out to you guys, and of course, Angus, who started the trend. Um, we'll see how far it goes. Every week now, I'm going to be sharing and adding to the playlist, because mm -hmm. uh, it's just so cool. It's like it's getting people pumped up, and I'm excited about it. So. And of course, anytime there's a very cool tip on video, we're going to share that on the blog as well. OK. Well, so that's going to be keep it. Keep on releasing those yes, videos. Yes, please. So keep on. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's basically the shop talk this week, folks. A nice and short one, but remember to check those out. OK. Let's do, let's do this one next. I want to do community makes. This is where we highlight some makes from the community, some people uh, that are doing some cool projects. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is pretty much the part where we, uh, we're using this segment as like a platform to promote you guys. So if you, have a, if you are starting to make YouTube videos, you've got a channel, or you have some projects, let us know in the comments. And we'll gather them up and share them every week. 
So let's take a look at some some uh, some makes this week. We got one over here on Thingiverse. Here we go. This was made by Creative Tools, who's a design studio in Sweden. They made our mini MIDI controller, our very small little MIDI controller from last year or earlier this year, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, not much detail other than, you know, thanks Adafruit for the awesome MIDI controller. Well, thank you, sir, for making it. Let's take a look at uh, Creative Tools' profile. They are the makers of Benchy. They actually made Benchy. There it is, the original Benchy. This thing's been like printed like a billion times. <laughs> it's the de facto calibration it's now, cube yeah, now. It is, <laughs> it is. And they also made the smartphone studio. This has been getting a lot of hits. A lot of hits. It's featured on... on um, on front Thingiverse, page, yeah. on the front page, yeah. But they have a bunch of cool different designs, a good mix of design and functionality. I like it a lot. So be sure to subscribe to them, or follow them, rather, on Thingiverse if you haven't already. And yeah, they have a bunch of cool designs. So shout out to you guys, Creative Tech Tools. You guys are this week's featured maker, designer dudes. Yep, there you very go. awesome work. OK, well, again, Community Makes, you know how to get to us. Get, get with us on the social channels. We want to promote you folks mm -hmm. for making awesome stiffs. And if you make one of our makes, don't forget to hit that made button or Thank remix you. button, add a short little description, and upload any of the photos and any techniques you learned along the way. That's right. Let's take a short break to promote discount code. If you want to pick up any electronics, any filament, a 3D printer, or such, don't pay full price. We got 10% off the coupon code for you. That's right. The cheapest prices on the internet. You get free shipping when you get a free when you get when you buy a printer. Yeah, no free printer. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> Only if you win that contest. Oh, that's right. Somebody is getting a printer bot. Okay. Well, that's the break part. Uh, let's jump into the Q and A now. Oh. Q and A. Here it is. Remember, if you have any questions, leave it below in any of the videos, and we'll gather them up for a future episode. That's right. Okay. We get my Q &A First on. One. First one is from Krista. What's the trinket doing in this tutorial regarding the DIY ring light for DSLR cameras? Just providing power, or is it running a sketch? And if so, what sketch? The tutorial only covers the three D printing and connecting of the ring. That's right. Most of our tutorials, our videos they're, they're rather, are like trailers, really. Like trailers, yeah. yeah. To get you guys to look at the whole tutorial, because we spend a lot of time writing the tutorial. Um, so all the code and libraries are in there. Uh, but yeah, this is a really simple sketch. It's just running all the, it's just running through a loop and telling all the NeoPixels to be a certain color. So that's all it's doing. So if you run a really simple uh, sketch to just turn the lights on, check that one out. You can of course tweak the colors um, and address them individually, which is kind of cool. But yeah, that's what the trinket is doing in the tutorial. Thank and you for the question, Krista. Again, don't forget, read a description. It'll link you right to where step by step. Photographed, yeah. you can copy all the code in there. Yeah, that's right. It says it's in the video as well. Okay, so this next question is from H2B John. Does the Astrobox work with the Ultimaker 2? And is there a video on how it works with the Pi camera? Yeah, so we tried out Astroprint on the Ultimaker, and there was a couple little glitches on there. So Astro, uh, I'm sorry, Octoprint is what we'd recommend for using on the Ultimaker 2. That's right. It'll work with the Raspberry Pi camera out of the box. No upgrading required to it. Mm -hmm. With the latest version of it, you can just burn it to your SD card. And so it's pretty. It's pretty simple. Um, it comes with a um, a text file that you just type in your um, your Wi-Fi credentials, and it logs on to the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit. Uh, of a workaround inside of Astrobox. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it, you can't see it. I've heard yeah. people have different problems, but I would recommend Octoprint. It seems to work. Uh, it's a little bit more reliable, too. So check it out. And that's why this is this week's project, too, because we were checking out the Touch UI. Yep. Thank you for the question, John. Next one is from Andrew Bevelheimer. What's up, dude? Hey, guys, can you show your overhead camera mount? I've been looking to get one for some videos, but not sure what the best option is. Thank you. Yeah, that is a great point. Yeah, so we shot a little video here of how the little um, setup is. Yeah, but first, let's take a look at the Thingiverse uh, thing. You can download this and remix this to work with our new uh, D-ring and um, even the socket ball head if you want. But yeah, um, I'm using a standard microphone stand. It's like a boom mic stand. Mm -hmm. And they all have this um, this threading. What is it called, Pedro? The threading of it? Oh, it's a 5 -8 threading, which is standard for microphones. That's stands. right. And they're, they don't come with a tripod, <coughs> like a standard uh, quarter 20 tripod uh, adapter. But uh, that's why I made this one. So it's, it's uh, just two pieces. 
and it needs a couple of hardware screws, but you can print it with no support material. And uh, I'm using it here with the H4N microphone, but you can, of course, also use it with, um, a, webcam. with a webcam. So let's take a look at that video now. Here's the webcam. Uh, so you need a, a hex nut, a bolt, and the quarter 20 screw that you can um, get from the Adafruit shop now. I actually, we didn't get, we didn't have those at the time, so mm -hmm. I'm using, I'm repurposing one, but you can remix this design, of course, to make it work with other hardware bits. Maybe you want a different type of screw. That's where the, uh, what is it called? The five, the five eighths. eighths? Five eighths thing. And then it swivels. You can adjust it, and it has like these little teeth inside um, the little slot there so that you can adjust the uh, sort of Like the little angle. stoppers, yeah. Yeah, little stoppers. Uh, so I'm, for the webcam itself, we're using a Logitech C920 webcam, which is an HD webcam, USB. Um, and it works really well. We've been using it uh, ever since we started the show. And we use it all the time. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you for the question, Andrew. Um, again, check it out on Thingiverse. I'll have it linked below. You can download it and remix it to your heart's content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very handy tool. Thank you for that question, Andrew. I'm glad somebody asked it. I like gear stuff. All right, next one is from Riley, H Dog. <laughs> What's up, Riley? From Extreme 3D on YouTube. What, I what are the best print settings for Ninja Flex on the Flashforge Creator Pro? <laughs> Whenever I sorry, I don't know what I did there. <laughs> Whenever I print it with the layers, the layers split. Do you have any tips? Yeah. So the yes. best three tips that you always have to do for printing in NinjaFlex is you have to slow down your speed. So in this case, we sometimes use 45 millimeters or 45 millimeters a second for right. the uh, print, and 60 Trans millimeters a second for the travel rate. And travel rate. So and we also have the printing profiles you can get off of our GitHub page. That's right. Not, not, not everybody knows that, but we offer our Simplify 3. If you're using Simplify 3D, uh, we offer our oh, yeah. profiles for the each printer. The second thing that you have to do is turn off your attraction. And yes, then the third thing is print a little bit hotter. So maybe 230, 235, and that'll get you some very nice prints. So that's the top three. Uh, settings that we always have to use when printing in NinjaFlex. That's right. Um, um, slow recapping. it down. Slow it down. Turn off retraction. Turn off retraction. And, and print, print a little hotter. hotter. Okay. But yeah, it's NinjaFlex is rather difficult to print with, but with the right settings, you can print some really nice stuff. Okay. Well. Oh, oh also, I saw your video on the uh, FlashForge Creator Pro review. Great job. We are sharing it this week, so be sure to check out Riley's YouTube channel if you haven't. Okay, next one is from Slimy Gaming. Can you make a controller and like a mini TV console out of them? I think you're saying like, can you use the Bluetooth, um, the EasyKey Bluetooth gamepad that we made with your TV? I think you could. If your TV supports Bluetooth controllers, the Apple TV hopefully gets that functionality soon. It is still like new. Uh, but I'm thinking like the Chromecast and the Roku boxes probably support Bluetooth. Uh, keyboards, and that's basically what this thing is. It's a Bluetooth controller uh, that's like standard uh, HDID. So yeah, I think that would be really cool actually to control your keyboard with a 3D printed uh, gamepad. Yeah. That'd be really cool. You could definitely use it on OctoPrint and use it to jog your right. print head around. That's right. I'm going to do like a little thing about that. I think <laughs> that'd be really fun. Well, thank you for the question, Slimy Gaming. I think it's a cool idea. Okay, next one is from Trey Rudebush. This is a comment, not a question, actually, on the 175 filament, using 175 filament on the Ultimaker 2. And he says, you need to replace the, PT, the PTFE tubing. It's made for 3 millimeter filament, not 175 millimeter. The extrusion and retraction will not work. There is too much space in the tube. Same for the hot end. Too big of a hole for the filament. Yeah, so this That's is... That's we would have thought, too. Yeah, so this but is what, what held us it. back from actually trying it. But when we ran out of filament, we were like, all right, screw it. Let's do some experiments and see what actually happens. And lo and behold, it does work. Don't knock it until you try it. Yeah. If you see in the video, Pedro is printing this part right here using 175 millimeter filament. Folks, this is nothing but retraction. And there is zero cleanup on this part. This entire helmet was printed on the, well, most of the parts were printed on the uh, on the Ultimaker Top 2. Top part, bottom part, and the honeycomb shades in there. This thing's really strong. There's no, uh, the layer adhesion's really well. 
um, it prints, what, what speeds were you printing at? So I was printing at 60 millimeters by... A medium I think range. 80. Yeah, yeah. A medium range. So pretty fast. Uh, well, for it's that, medium, that speed. yeah. yeah. 90, and again, 150 is fast. this took 30 hours to print and it didn't hiccup it's not reliable. once. reliable, there's yeah. no skipping, all the infills really Absolutely tough. no cleanup was done it's, to it's, this whole honeycomb pattern. It's like, you, you can't take our word for it, but the, the proof is in the prints, folks. I even printed out um, a little piece here. Let me show you what I printed. Uh, for Halloween, I thought I'd make a big hollowed version of this Omni Skull from, uh, from Jozo. And there's, there's, very, there's only support material for these things over here. But for the most part, this thing is super strong. Uh, the layer adhesion is amazing and there's no skipping at all. This was printed with 175 filament with no PET, default PET, P, T, F, E tubing. Um, it works. Uh, we're just trying to tell you that, you know, don't knock until you try it and we're not shitting you guys. It's like, it really works. Um, maybe that's why the video doesn't have a lot of views because people just don't believe it. But you guys, I don't know. Again, it's, it's in the, the proof is in the printing. We obviously have we should probably should put put more videos out of like here's here's proof of it printing with 175 filament because I don't think Trey you believe us but you have to believe us it's real let's put <laughs> yeah, that over so there. again weekly show weekly projects yeah we've put hundreds of hours into this I don't know what else to tell you like <laughs> thanks for watching though Trey I think you got a question coming up too so we'll get you that on that one but there you go that's 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 our results good stuff Toby Kirk Kirkby is asking, or actually another comment on the, uh, the Delta Siemens to Orion printer. Or no, this is the, the VIP oh. Delta printer. Oh, okay. He's saying a heated bed implying ABS, not enclosed build area. Good luck getting higher than two inches build on the ABS. You know, that is true, but... Um, we're, we're in Florida. Well, we actually we were shot outside this with... 90 degree <laughs> weather. Yeah, they shot it in the garage. <laughs> ice, ice, ice tea, no, ice... Ice, uh, vanilla baby, ice. Is, baby vanilla ice. It was vanilla ice. <laughs> it was garage. in this garage, and um, it probably, it it probably does pretty. We good tend to ABS. forget that every not everybody has year round or year, yeah. Look, it works. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, it we definitely agree with you that um, if you're printing something really big, really tall you like this, absolutely in ABS enclosure. You can see right back there that our one of our replicators has the an enclosure, yeah. complete enclosure, and that's all for ABS. Yeah, a lot of people just put like a cardboard over it. I think I saw Calvin Witz put a, like a piece of cardboard over the Ultimaker. Mm -hmm. You can do that too. Um, there's options out there, but yeah, I agree. Um, for anything that's over like two inches with ABS, you definitely want an enclosure. It absolutely not work. And if you've seen from last week's episode, the Q1A, mm -hmm. um, when we were first starting out, we were printing an ABS oh, and yeah, right. we didn't know about that. And it actually led splits. your design. A lot of splits and it made the design look kind of cool. So there you go. But thank you for the comment, to Toby. That's right. All right, next up, this is actually a question. This is from Kyle Jennings on the Pocket Pie Girl. Is there a Pie Girl model that has a speaker that's not the Pocket version? Yeah, so I think that the, po the original uh, Game Girl has enough room for a speaker, so you can totally remix that. And check out the remixes that are already on the Thingiverse page. A lot of people have already made really cool remixes, one with like a volume knob and, yep. a, and a stereo speaker. So there's options in there. Um, you can take a little bit from the assembly from the Pocket Pie Girl and, of course, the assembly from the original Pie Girl and sort of, you know, mash them together. That's what we really like when people make their own custom makes from it. That's right. Because all the files are available and all the tutorials are there. Thank you for the question, Kyle. Good luck with that one. And here's an actual question from Trey Rudebush, who had that remark on the 175 filament. What printer do you like best, the Lulzbot Taz, the Ultimaker 2, or the Type A Machine Series 1? Thinking about buying another 3D printer, and these are my top picks. Yeah, so it definitely depends what you want to use these printers for. If you want something that has the ability to have dual extrusion with, you know, adding a $500 head on top of that, yeah, you're going to go with the Taz. It comes with a heated bed. Um, There's the only many thing upgrades for the Taz, like a Flexi yeah. Dually, mm -hmm. I believe. So you can do dual extrusion on a pretty big bed, it's like 290 or 270, what is it again? Yeah, 297 by okay. 250. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. If you want to go with something that has the ability to print somewhere in uh, order of like 20 microns with interchangeable nozzles now with the Olsen block. And fast, because it's Bowden. Fast, I Bowden. think the Ultimaker too. 
if you don't care too much about uh, Ninja Flex, uh, yeah, definitely go with the Ultimaker right. 2. It has That's a heated right. bed as well. If you want to print as big as you can, 12 by 12 by 12, um, print with Ninja Flex right out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, go with the Type A uh, Series 1. Uh, actually, the Pro model has the heated bed. That's right. And it so. has an updated Octoprint installation with BeagleBone Black. And I think it has a camera, too. Yes. Better motion-rated cables as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, so you really have to weigh out your options. It's like you can't just, you can't just say, this one's better, because they all, they have, all have their strengths. own strengths. The, the Taz and the Ultimaker 2 both use 3mm, uh, three 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 but both can be converted to 175. Mm -hmm. um, the Type A Series 1, 175 out of the box, but it works with every material. Metal composites, flexible stuff. They all have heated beds now, all three of those that you picked. So it's a kind of tough one. It really depends on your price point. I mean, they're all around the same price, too. Mm -hmm. This can be a tough one. Yep. Um, We're lucky we have all three of these guys. Well, we have to test them. It's yep. our job. But yeah. Um, we we're just out wait we're just kind of laying out what are the benefits what of each do with these, yeah. and there you go it's a tough decision i can't answer that it's it's again like that camera lens thing like there's not one lens to rule them all yeah so there you go mm -hmm. thanks for the question though trey i think that's is that it that's it folks thank you guys so much everybody um thank you thank you so much um yeah that's gonna be it for the show um, one last thing, if you guys want to pick up anything from the Adafruit shop, excluding, you know, software and gift certificates, check out the coupon code. It is Octoprint. That's right. It'll get you 10% off during checkout. Works on printers. Remember, you get free shipping with all of these. Let's take a look at that. Not a lot a of companies actually do this. And on top of that, automatically added to your cart. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. You can't even remove them from the cart. <laughs> <laughs> you must get them. That's right. So if you spend 100 bucks or more, you get the half-size Perma Proto. It's really great for all sorts of different projects, of course. It's a very high quality one. You get free. You get a, a five volt trinket if you spend 150 or more. For 200 dollars more, that means if you buy uh, an actual printer or anything that's above 200, you free get free shipping. shipping on that. That's that's amazing. And this is like the best shipping too. This is actual trackable shipping. That's right. It'll actually get to your house. That's right. And then for 250 or more, you get all that stuff, plus a pro trinket five volt. That's right. So that's a lot of stuff. And if, if you want more details on this, folks, check out adafruit.com slash free. Right. That'll well, give you all the details. supplies last, so I definitely take advantage. Supplies are going fast. And of course, we do want to remind you that the holidays are upon us. We're going to be out of stock on everything. So make sure you put your order in now. That's right. And one quick programming note. Oh, Next yeah. week is Thursday. Is, is actually a holiday here in the States called Thanksgiving. So we're actually going to take the day off. Well, you know, we're not gonna have the show, but I'm gonna be working on that pit boy, man. I'm telling you right there. Working on that pit boy. I'm gonna be eating some turkey. Eating and some turkey, working, working on, on some the projects. pit boy. I'll be watching um, some streams of Fallout 4 as you get more inspired. I've been, I've been yeah, watching yeah, yeah. Fallout 4 like on the stream and just like catting away. This is tough, man. I'll, I'll talk more about it. But of course, check out this week's uh, layer by layer tutorial. I know it's a long one, but it's a good one. Definitely Fusion 360. Useful. Hey, Adabot. He's right there. OK, well, that's going to be it for the show, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to leave you off with some links. Of course, some links. Here they are. Adafruit.com. That's where all our tutorials are. There's a lot of tutorials coming out every week. That's right. Remember, Not just this from is us, but for everybody. All of the step-by-step, -step, lots of photos, code you can copy and paste. Libraries, code, new products. Every new product that comes out comes with a guide. That's right. It tells you all the good stuff about it. Um, be sure to check out the. Um, Google Plus, we're on the Google, or Adafruit's Google Plus. There's a lot of stories and, and community projects being shared there. A lot of community projects are being shared on 3D Thursday. Every Thursday, 3D printed related stuff. You can follow myself, Pedro. I'm Ekin, your video pixel. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Adafruit as well on Get Twitter. A lot of the behind the scenes of what's going on. That's right. And cute stuff like babies and frogs. <laughs> okay, well, let's take a look at the next thing. Starting off the week with Wearable Wednesday with Becky Stern. A lot of great wearable fashion forward projects, project workshop, answering your stuff, win some prizes. That's right. Check out Becky every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. It's Ooh. a good time. It's a live show. That's right. Yeah. I'm always there. We're always there, actually. So say hi. We're, we're there in the chat room chatting it up. And then after that, in the evening on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. is the show and tell. Share your projects. This is where you get to talk to Lamar and Phil and us and other folks in the Tony Nicola's there. Sometimes Phil B is there. 
share your retro gear, your projects, your maker spaces, and and uh, and stuff. Just it's a good time. We always have fun there. And then shortly after that, because it's, it's a half hour long, at eight p.m. we have a full hour of Lamar, Lady Ada, and Phil, Mr. Lady Ada. Ask all your engineering questions on Ask Engineer. It is a full hour of Raspberry Pi, Arduino, open source, and much, much more. New products as well. So that's the whole lineup of shows, folks. Oh, and then random, sometimes exclusive, whatever. Um, uh, check out Periscope for Periscope. the desk. Lady From the Ada. desk of La Da Ada. La Da Ada. OK, we got a coupon code for you. There it is, Octoprint, 10% off. Paid some bills. Thank you guys so much. We are sponsored by you folks. We got no venture capital. We got no sponsors. It is all sponsored by you guys. Sponsored by you folks. So, so go buy some stuff. Yeah, please. Please do. Or just share our content and like do that stuff too. Helps us out a lot. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in two weeks. But until then, remember to keep on making. See you guys. Bye.